Hello. This is our song. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Search me and try me. Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord. Wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only, always, living in me. Amen. You like the picture of the baby crying? Really, our lesson is about being born again. Some of you are sitting there, and I can imagine you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about John chapter 3. When Jesus talked with Nicodemus, he talked about being born again. I will sign it. I will sign Nicodemus as Nicodemus at night. Why? Because Nicodemus came to see Jesus at night. So Nicodemus. It saves me from spelling it out every time. Now, as John chapter 3 tells us, there was a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was one of the Pharisees. You may remember hearing about Pharisees and explaining that Pharisees gave Jesus trouble because of their attitude. But Nicodemus was an honest man. He himself was a Pharisee, and he felt that he should follow God's word. But he was open to something different, and so he listened. He was an important Jewish leader. One night, Nicodemus came to Jesus. Why? We don't know. Some think that he was afraid of people seeing him. Maybe one reason, but another reason could have been he had to work during the day and didn't have any time until at night. So it's your, your guess is as good as mine. Nicodemus said, Rabbi. Rabbi means teacher. Teacher, we know that you are a teacher sent from God. Why does Nicodemus say that? You notice what he says. No person can do these miracles that, that you do without God's help. Nicodemus saw and he was impressed. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, a person must be born again to 
if a person is not born again, then that person cannot be in God's kingdom. Nicodemus was puzzled when Jesus said this. Nicodemus said, but if a man is already old, how can he go be born again? A person cannot enter his mother's body again. So a person cannot be born a second time. He was thinking about physical birth. Jesus wasn't talking about physical birth. But Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. A person must be born from water and spirit. Those two, water and spirit. water is talking about baptism if oh, in the spirit as I've already explained in the past or in past sermons I explained that water itself doesn't save you it is your faith in Jesus you believe in Jesus son, is the son of God so I believe that he can wash away my sins then you obey and you go and you're baptized Jesus will wash your sins away and you'll rise to a new life from then on now here Jesus says if a person is not born from water and the spirit then he cannot enter God's kingdom it's something serious to think about. Jesus explains and says, a person's body is born from his human parents. That's what I called a while ago, the physical birth. But a person's spiritual life is born from the spirit the Holy Spirit. Don't be surprised that I told you you must be born again. The wind blows where it wants to go. You hear the wind blow, but you don't know where the wind comes from or where the wind is going. You hear it. It is the same with every person that is born from the Spirit. You don't know about the Spirit and what He will do in your life. When Jesus said these words, Nicodemus did not understand. Nicodemus asked, how can all this be possible? Jesus said, you are an important teacher of Israel, meaning the Jews, but you still don't understand these things? I tell you the truth, we talk about what we know we tell about what we have seen but you people don't accept what we tell you what was Jesus talking about okay Jesus himself is God he lives in the form of God but he gave up his glory and richness and put on flesh and became one of us. That's hard for us to understand. But God, wow, with the things, with God, all things are possible. He can, wow. Now Jesus has experienced heaven. 
He knows what's there, and he can talk about it, about it. But people can't. We talk about what we know. Jesus knew. We tell you the truth, or about what, or we tell about what we've seen. But you people don't accept what we tell you. Even today, some people resist. I don't, we don't need to be baptized today. But the Bible says we're not trying to argue. But that's what the Bible says. You can see and understand. I have told you about things here on earth. But you do not believe me. So surely you will not believe me if I tell you about the things of heaven. The only one that has ever gone up to heaven is the one that came down from heaven, the Son of God. Jesus himself had been, in, been to heaven. He's seen it. He knows. He came down, and he can tell the people about heaven. Now, Jesus is talking about Moses in the Old Testament. He said, Moses lifted up the snake in the desert. It's the same with the Son of Man. You know, Jesus said, likes to call himself the Son of Man. Jesus is both Son of God and Son of Man. How? Jesus got his flesh from the Virgin Mary, who was born as a baby. So in that way, he's son of man. It was a woman, but now we're talking about mankind. So Jesus identifies himself with people here on earth. The son of man must be lifted up too. Then every person that believes in the Son of Man can have life forever. You don't understand, okay? Before we go on, the Son of Man must be lifted up too. It's like when Moses took the snake it wasn't a real snake, it was a false snake, and he hung it and on, a, on a staff and put it up. What happened? Then every person that believes in the Son of Man can have life forever. Jesus reminded Nicodemus about the time Moses lifted up the brass snake when the Israelites were in the in the wilderness. We're looking at the Old Testament in the book of Numbers, chapter 21. It says, The people of Israel left Mount Hor and traveled the to the road that goes to the Red Sea. They did this to go around the country of Edom. But the people became impatient. They began complaining against God and Moses. The people said, why did you bring us out of Egypt? We will die here in the desert. There's no bread. There's no water. And we hate this terrible food. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people. The snakes bit the people. And many of the people of Israel died. 
the people came to Moses and said, We know that we have sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord. Ask him to take away those snakes. So Moses prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a bronze snake and put it on a pole. If any person is bitten by a snake, then that person should look at the bronze snake on the pole. Then that person will not die. So now after Jesus reminded Nicodemus about the bronze snake, what did he tell Nicodemus? Moses lifted up the snake in the desert. It is the same with the Son of Man. The Son of Man must be lifted up too on the cross. Then every person that believes in the Son of Man can have life forever. Some debate, did Jesus say these words? Or did John write them as an addendum? I don't, personally, I myself, I think Jesus spoke the, these words because, it, because of the context. It's not that John suddenly wrote, stepped in and wrote those. Anyway, it says, yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. God gave his son so that every person that believes in him would not be lost, but have life forever. Maybe you noticed. Yes, it's a little different from the King James, but it's still John 3.16 which many people love to quote. They read it and they're comforted. That's true. Maybe some of you have seen on TV or in football games, some people hold up signs that say, John 316. What are they talking about? So you look, you read it. That's the verse. It's a beautiful verse. Paul talked about Jesus saying, we must be born of water and of the Spirit. Paul explained that this water makes us new people. In Titus, that's the young preacher that Paul sent letters to, he says, he said, he mean God, saved us because of his mercy or love. You can't have mercy without love. Not because of the good things we did to be right with God. We try to be right with God. And we should ha have that aim, yes. But that's not what saves us. He saved us through the washing that made us new people. So let's go back to the washing. The washing is baptism. He saved us by making us new through the Holy Spirit. When Peter talked to the people on Pentecost Day, He told them, repent, meaning change your hearts and lives, 
and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So when we were baptized, we were buried with Christ and shared his death. It's the same as Jesus dying on the cross. And we're buried. It's a symbol. We were buried with Christ so that we could be raised up and live a new life. This happened the same as Christ was raised from death by the wonderful power of the Father. God's power was enough to raise Jesus from death. He was beat and whipped and put to death on the cross. Yet God, God's power made Jesus alive again. In the same way, God's power is enough to forgive us all our sins. <clears throat> the true children of God are those people that let God's Spirit lead them. How? Through your Bible. When you read and see what God wants, you read and you understand. You let God's Spirit lead you through His Word. I hope this short sermon helps you to understand the importance of believing in Jesus, the only Son of the Father, who died on the cross so that your sins can be forgiven. We, we'll pray now. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for your deep love that people can't understand. How you love even the most awful sinners and yet give them a chance that they can be saved and forgiven of their sins. We pray that those who hear this prayer those who are not Christians yet, not your children yet, that you that they will realize that they need to come to you and be saved. We pray that they will look and see Jesus on the cross and realize that he did it to save them, that they will go ahead and confess their faith and be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins and be raised to a new life from then on for you. We thank you for that wonderful news through, that Jesus brought us. We ask that those who hear me will do the same uh, way. They will pray. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> We love you and hope that you will listen to the, to the Lord Jesus and obey him and show your faith in him. It is not your good works that will save you, but his, meaning God's mercy, on you, his wonderful grace. Will you take it? I hope you will. We love you.